The American Civil War was fought from 1861 to 1865, and over 620,000 men lost their lives. Compare that to World War II, which we had 405,000 that lost their lives. Uh, the thing about the Civil War is that all wars combined up to this date are still less than were lost during just the Civil War. So we're going to take a look at the conflict, at their equipment, and how they survived, how they lived, and apply it to today's survival or prepping world. And guys, one of the things that's always said is those who don't study history are bound to repeat it. And we can take some of these lessons and apply it to today's standard, even though that war happened almost 160 years ago. So when it comes to the field gear, uh, typically the North and the South had very similar gear. Uh, one of the big things about the North, though, is it was more highly populated. In fact, there was 18.5 million people in the North, while there were 5.5 million free people in the South, and then 3.5 that were enslaved. Uh, so the North had a pretty big advantage with population. Uh, but also, they had most of the industrial might. One of the things about the South was that it was an agrarian society, mainly farms, plantations, and so they didn't have the means to produce a lot of goods. And that ended up being a big deciding factor with the winning of the North. Now, of course, uniforms and equipment did vary, uh, especially in the South where they had to use whatever they could put their hands on. Uh, but they typically had a knapsack, which was a backpack, carried most of their personal items, change of clothes, uh, different things that they kept with them, uh, whether it was family photos, whether it was a Bible, a journal, uh, maybe a harmonica or something, and also a lot of their utensils to be able to cook. And then they had their haversack. Uh, their haversack was a, a sling that went across. It was a bag. And in that bag, they carried most of their food items. Salted pork was one of the biggest, and it would preserve it, it would keep it for a long time in the field. Uh, another big thing that was carried was hardtack. Uh, we did a video about how to make hardtack, and it's a very dense bread. It'll last for a long time. Uh, and really, it's so hard that you can't eat it necessarily as it is. You dip it in coffee, in soups, you can fry it with bacon, uh, and you can produce some kind of starch that'll just give you more energy. Uh, also, beans, tea, coffee, sugar, those kind of things. And you have to remember that this was in 1860s. So, you know, it was limited to the foods that they did eat. Now, one of the things is they carried that food on their person, but they also had supply wagons. And those supply wagons would actually give them more food and be able to sustain them which is one thing in a grid down situation you're not gonna have. You're gonna have to rely on what you have in your pack. But one thing that I thought was interesting was the knapsack and the haversack were either painted black, so it would be a water repellent, or even tar and pitch, or it could be oil cloth or wax canvas. And so this kept what was inside protected. And so that's really an important element, especially if you have a get home bag or a bug out bag, is to make sure that it is water repellent. Now they also had a belt set, uh, and you know, the belt really holds the platform together. It holds the different items that you use, of course, uh, mostly officers, cavalry, and artillery carried pistols, uh, but your standard infantry usually did not. Having a sheath for your bayonet, having your cartridge box, having a cap box, and that kept your ammunition together. Now, we're not really going to get into weapons because obviously in 1860 the weapon systems were very different, but one of the key points is that whether you're on the north or the south, a lot of the weapons were very similar. They typically carried about 60 rounds of ammunition, give or take, some carried more, uh, and it just was a very slow firearm to load. Uh, and of course it was black powder. Your lever actions and your metallic cartridges didn't come until much later. And so that's one of the things about being armed today is having firearms that are comparable to other forces that you might deal with. And to me, the AK-47, the AR-15, those kind of go-to rifles, you know, are very important to have to be able to equalize the playing field. And then when it comes to personal items, of course, hygiene was one thing that they carried with them. Their soap, their toothbrush even, uh, ways to keep clean. But also, again, more socks, because that's one of the things that's very important with a long march, is you need to take care of your feet. They typically had a Bible and a lot of them carried journals, and they would write in the journals, they would carry paper so they could send letters with stamps, and typically they would have money. 
and then maybe something to be able to entertain themselves. Now, one big part of the Civil War was the cause. And early on, the South felt like that they were being invaded. They were uh, defending their homes. They were defending their families from this aggressive North that was coming down, uh, trying to, to restore the union of the states. And one of the things that the South had was they had a very strong survival instinct. And because of that, early on, the South was really winning most of the battles, even though they had less people. Uh, they had very competent generals. And of course, Robert E. Lee is world famous and probably one of the greatest generals that ever walked the face of the earth. Uh, but with strategy and with just that cause, that do or die type mentality, uh, the South early on again was very strong. One of the problems that the North had was they weren't getting conscripts. They weren't getting people to volunteer. They actually had to reinstate the draft. And so they were bringing in people that really didn't want to fight at first. Yes, there were a lot that did, but at first, a lot of people just didn't see a cause. They didn't care about the Union. Honestly, slavery as a cause didn't come till later. And once slavery became the cause, that really inspired the North to fight. And that was a very deciding factor. And so whatever you're doing, you have to have a cause. You have to have something that you're willing to die for uh, to survive and to protect your family and to protect your supplies. And that is a big lesson just in itself, is the cause is vitally important. Because there were 207 million men that fought during the Civil War. And again, 620,000 deaths. But out of those deaths, two-thirds were due to illness, sickness, and an epidemic. Two-thirds of the deaths. Now that, to me, is one of the biggest lessons that we can learn because, guys, if things go sideways, if we have a grid down, economic downturn where medical attention is not readily available, one of the most important things is going to be to be able to keep yourself clean, keep yourself sterile, keep down infection. Infection is one of those things that kills as much as anything. Uh, being able to get the rest you need, being able to have supplies if you get wounded or, or you get injured is to be able to continue to clean that and to wrap it up with sterile gauze and keep those wounds fresh. Having antibiotic ointment, very important. One of the things about the Civil War was antibiotics weren't even known during that time. But a lot of the lives that were lost during the Civil War could have been avoided with just being able to keep wounds clean and to keep germs out. They didn't even know that germs existed during that time. We were at a Civil War reenactment one time, and one of the doctors was there who was a reenactor, and he talked about some of these issues. And he said one of the things is that when they would call people into camp to sign up, and they would all meet at the camp, and he said these big old strapping, healthy farm boys would show up. And then they'd have these city boys who worked in a factory and they just worked in, they weren't out in the sun that much and they just looked a little bit peaked and they didn't really look that healthy. But the big farm boys would get sick because they didn't have an immunity system built up. And so they would start the march. And as they started marching, all these big strapping healthy country boys would end up on the side of the trail with dysentery and other things and would end up dying. And so they changed their policy to where once they started and got people into camp, they waited two weeks to let all these young men get sick. And then when they healed back up, they started marching. And that was something that had to be learned the hard way. And guys, also along with that is foot care, because if you're walking and traveling by foot a long way, I mean, you need to have extra socks. You need to switch those out. You need to keep your feet as dry as possible. Um, having things to be able to soften and cushion to keep blisters down because those blisters will rupture and then they cause problems with your feet. And so taking good care of your feet is vital. Water is vitally important. Um, obviously, a lot of us have different filter systems and we have ways to take water. Uh, one of the things during the Civil War was most of the streams and the rivers and creeks were clean and they could drink directly out of the water. Uh, unless there was a battle that had gone on days before upstream, and that could cause some issues. But typically, they just filled their canteens with water that was in the creek. Uh, guys, today, that is not the case. And so we need to make sure that we have those filter systems to be able to clean our water. And because one of the things about getting sick with water is that it can kill you. It can dehydrate you. Uh, you're going to be completely worthless, even if you do live through it. So 
Make sure that you just don't see a stream and drink out of it. You need to have a good filter system uh, if you're going to be drinking water that's just in the wild. Uh, one of the stories from the Civil War that I've always thought was interesting was there was a major battle going on. There was a cavalry soldier that had his horse shot out from under him. He was dying of thirst. He said he could. He was in the midst of the battle, and there was a small stream that ran through the middle of the battlefield. And he laid down to it to get some water, and it just was filled with blood. And then all of a sudden, the blood would clear. He would grab some water up. He'd drink it as fast as he can, and then the blood would pour back. And he would have to just take moments where it had some clean, clear water. Water you're going to be desperate for, so you need to make sure that you take care of that water. Now, conflict zones, uh, and this is very important because there are certain areas that just drew the attention of different armies, and that's where most of the battles were fought. Yes, there were times where groups would come against each other just impromptu, but typically uh, these were set battles uh, around defensive positions, forts, uh, maybe a train depot, a uh, supply depot, uh, where things needed to be taken by the South or needed to be destroyed by the North. And supplies were vital. Also, bridges, uh, rivers where they had fords or ferries, those were really under attack or guarded heavily. Uh, and so high ground, very important. Uh, you know, armies that had the high ground had the advantage. And then just natural terrain obstacles. Uh, so these are places that you want to avoid if you don't want to be in any kind of conflict. Uh, if you do want to be in some kind of conflict and those are places you need, you need to consider those as targets. Now again, this is about survival, but sometimes survival could be your supplies have been taken by a raider group and you need to go back and you need to get them to sustain your life and the life of your family. Of course, we talked about food already, but food is very important. Um, of course, hardtack, you know, you can make it and it's great even today. Uh, but there are so many different choices out there, of course, lifeboat food, you have Mountain House, you have a lot of different dehydrated foods, you have MREs, uh, there's a ton of different choices. And making sure that you have some of those available to be able to, if you need to bug out or you need to get home, you can do that. One of the things I do want to mention about bugging out is, guys, bugging out is a horrible idea. Uh, and one of the things is you're a glorified refugee, but there can be instances where bug out is your only option. Uh, the fact is you're going to be vulnerable, you're going to be out on the road, you're going to be wherever. And so again, bugging out is the last option, but you need to have a bug out plan. Uh, one of the things that happened during the Civil War was a lot of people were uprooted from their homes. Battlefields went on at farmhouses, <laughs> you know, and I mean, people had to leave and their places were completely ransacked. Also, armies moving through a lot of times would just take all the supplies in certain towns as they were pouring through. They needed them for themselves and they just took them. And so that is also a reason why you may lose your supplies. You may have to have a cache somewhere. You may need to get out of town. And so it doesn't have to necessarily be an army. It could be just a roving band of criminals. And that typically is one of the biggest problems around the world with different economic problems that have happened and where l rule of law starts to go away. And so having some backup plans and thinking about, you may be a refugee, how are you gonna survive that? How are you gonna protect your family? Because in a war situation, a lot of things can happen. And guys, we could be in a war situation that's not organized, but it could just be roving bands, warlords, just criminal elements that are trying to take your supplies. And you've got to be able to protect them, but if you can't, you've got to be able to have plan B. Now, another thing that's a lesson from the Civil War is typically they wore these really heavy wool jackets, wool clothes. They were really hot in the summertime, but it was part of their uniform. Uh, you know, make sure that you have the clothes that you need to take care of keeping your temperature at the right level, especially if it's in the summertime. And here's the thing, guys, you have what you have. Uh, you know, if, if things start to go south and you can't get supplies, whatever you have is all you have. So you need to take care of those things. You need to be able to know how to repair your clothes. You need to know how to maintain your firearms. Uh, one of the things in a modern army like today is that they go into combat zones and they have a mission. Then they come back to base. They can regroup. They can get resupplied. They can clean their firearms and keep them maintained. And so you may not have that option. So make sure that you have some kind of maintenance kit that you can do in the field, especially with your firearms, and to keep them clean. 
Uh, the one thing they did when they got back to camp is typically they took care of their gear and they made sure that things were right. One thing that was vital on a bayonet a scabbard is to make sure that the little brass tip was on there because one of the problems is sometimes that would come off and the bayonet would go through the sheath and they would accidentally stab somebody that was one of their own. And so you've got to be careful that your gear is in good order and you know if you need to sew on a button, that could be a huge deal. Uh, you need to fix a pack, you're able to do that. You're able to maintain what you have and you may have to maintain that in the field. And guys, last is morale. Now we talked about the calls that the South had at the beginning and how the North was kind of timid at first and then really got into it once they established their calls. But the South lost 258,000 men. The North lost 360,000 men. That's a 100,000 men difference with a smaller army that was less well supplied. But here's the thing, they had more people, and they had more supplies, and that was a huge deciding factor. But morale and keeping morale, keeping your will to live, keeping your survival instinct intact is very important. Guys, if we are in some kind of grid down situation, an economic meltdown, problems where people are becoming more and more violent, it's important to keep yourself as upbeat as possible. One of the things they did during the Civil War was they had music. They had harmonicas. They had different instruments where they could play. They sat around the campfire and sang songs. Uh, they played cards. Uh, they had a Bible, typically, especially during that time, and they would get inspiration from that. Again, they had a journal, a lot of them, and they would write notes. And a lot of the Civil War uh, battlefield encounters are documented by these journals. Uh, and then again, they have different type games and just ways to be able to kind of kick back. And of course, definitely whiskey <laughs> was a big part of that as well. So having a way to be able to take the edge off, to back up, and to remember why you really need to survive. Uh, that is a huge thing. So guys, just a few lessons from a, a conflict that happened over 160 years ago. Very important for us to take those lessons from the past and to really take a reality check at what we're doing today. Guys, in the commercial world we live in, in the disposable world, it's really important to make sure that we stay grounded. And a lot of these older skills, I mean, these men lived without electricity from day one, and they were able to survive and get through some of the worst conflicts on American soil. And so with that, hopefully we can take these lessons and help strengthen our preps to be better prepared. So guys, let's face it, we're preparing to defend ourselves and our family and our supplies that we can get through a situation and then hopefully later on we can move forward. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. I'll just be honest guys, I'm inside in the air conditioner and this thing's about to burn me up. I can't even imagine being at Gettysburg. <laughs> and there are a lot of things that we can learn from the Civil War. They lived with a lot. <laughs> and yet, there are a lot of things that we can glean from looking at these things.